Pretty sure y'all have been waiting for this one because I definitely have. You might discount Animal Kingdom, but I am here to tell you that you should not. This park is magical, y'all, and I'm gonna prove it to you today. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. I've always known that Disney's Animal Kingdom is amazing and stupendous and incredible and insert other great adjectives here, but now I wanna make sure you know it too. While many folks tend to write this park off as a half dayer, which can be understandable, it has fewer attractions than its three older siblings, you can easily fulfill a day here just by tracking down the awesome things we're gonna talk about right now. Enough introductions, let's jump into the wild. We're gonna start with some secret shortcuts, and this is gonna make your Animal Kingdom day so much easier. So we're always trying to scout out the best and quickest and least bottlenecked pathways across each of the parks. So here are the shortcuts we use the most in Animal Kingdom. Shortcut number one, the hidden walkway behind Africa and Asia. To find this secret pathway, you're gonna to need to head towards Harambe Village in Africa or by Caravan Road in Asia. This quiet little trail is almost always empty, which is why we love it. It also has a serene street and bridge set up partway through because even the least traveled Animal Kingdom paths are gonna make for a beautiful stroll. Also, closer to the caravan road side of the trail, you can find a hidden seating area, which makes for the perfect peaceful getaway during a very busy park day. Shortcut number two, Hidden Dinoland USA Path. Trying to cut through Dinoland USA? A walkway we use pretty frequently in the park is the path between the Dino Institute, the shop at the exit of Dinosaur, and Chester and Hester's Dinosaur Treasures. It directly connects from one gift shop to the other. The path is usually pretty quiet and it even has fun dinosaur themed photo ops on the Chester and Hester end. Plus, it helps you avoid all the hustle and bustle of the main part of Dino Land. Shortcut number three is Pandora to Africa. Now, I use it all the time. I hope you do too. It is so chill and relaxing. This is the walkway between Africa and Pandora. It's the one many guests don't use, but it's one of the most peaceful and picturesque strolls you're gonna find in the whole park. You'll find this walkway by Festival of the Lion King on the Africa side or down in the more lush part of Pandora if you're heading to Africa. This next one is also gonna make your day a whole lot easier. We've got some secret charging stations. Need to plug in your phone real quick and juice up? Animal Kingdom's got a few areas where you can find charging outlets. So go to Pizza Safari Quick Service or at the Finding Nemo, the Big Blue and Beyond Theater near the benches. Over at Nomad Lounge, you can find them under the bar. Note that we just found on My Disney Experience that you can search on the map for charging stations. It's not live for Animal Kingdom yet. We've only seen it in Magic Kingdom, but we can let people know how to keep checking. Or if you don't have time to sit and charge your phone at one of these locations, you can always pick up a portable fuel rod charger from one of the Animal Kingdom fuel rod kiosks. These you can find listed on the My Disney Experience app. Fuel rods initially cost $30 per charger, but you can swap them out for freshly charged rods for free. Our big Disney hack though, get your fuel rods on Amazon ahead of your trip so you can order two of these chargers for the price of one. Now, in a pinch and need a diaper for your baby ASAP, you can actually get a whole diaper changing kit for your kiddo from one of the Animal Kingdom's vending machines over at Conservation Station. Each diaper changing kit costs $3.50 and comes with two diapers plus wipes, but if you happen to need more wipes, because blowouts happen even to good babies, then you can find a pack of 16 available for purchase in the same machine as well. This might be your savior, so stick that in your quiver of arrows or your back pocket or anywhere you stick stuff that you want to remember. Now this next one I haven't talked about on this channel in probably years, but it's one of my favorite secrets in Animal Kingdom, the fake waterfall. So this is one that no matter how hard you look, you still might not be able to see it. Challenge accepted. Over in Pandora, the world of Avatar, there are three waterfalls toward the top of the mountain that creates the flight of passage entrance. But would you believe me if I told you that those waterfalls aren't actually the real deal? While these waterfalls appear to be real, they're actually an optical illusion made from a rotating wheel that looks like white water, but falls much slower than a real waterfall would, forcing it to appear further from you than it really is. Disney even added fabric at the bottom to make it look like mist coming from the water. Mind blown yet? Yeah, me too. 
Now, can you believe that the Lion King animated film is getting ready to celebrate its 30 year anniversary? Yes, I feel old as well. Now, in honor of the big 3-0, Disney's Animal Kingdom will be hosting a celebration this summer from June 10th to September 6th. This is brand new information. They just announced it. So get ready to meet and greet with Timon and Rafiki over at Rafiki's Planet Watch, very fitting, and keep your eyes peeled for new limited time merch and snacks coming to the park soon that'll also be themed around all things Lion King. And I'm gonna say right now, I don't know how I feel about using the phrase, keep your eyes peeled. That seems weird and uncomfortable. So let me know in the comments how you feel about keeping eyes peeled. Maybe we'll stop saying it. I don't know. Moving on, the Oasis Rope Bridge. Now this is like something that everybody forgets is there, but it's one of my favorite things in Animal Kingdom. The Oasis area is the Animal Kingdom land that you walk through at the front of the park to get you to Discovery Island. So it's what you walk, that big hill that you walk up to get to the big tree, that's the Oasis. And if you take the left side pathway when you first enter, you can run into a hidden rope bridge. When you walk across this bridge, you'll come out into a rock cave that's directly facing the Tree of Life, which is very cool. It's a very cool vantage point for the Tree of Life. And I love going across this rope bridge because it makes me feel like a little kid. I also pushed my mom across this rope bridge twice in her wheelchair, which was kind of fun and a little bit scary. So another piece of big new news. Animal Kingdom is getting ready to change in a couple of major ways. First of all, we learned that Dinoland USA is going to be rethemed probably to the tropical Americas. So that's going to host IP attractions themed around films and franchises like Encanto and Indiana Jones. Secondly, It's Tough to Be a Bug, currently taking place inside the Tree of Life, is also going to be replaced with a new Zootopia-themed show at a later date. Now, we don't know any official timelines for when this is going to happen, and don't worry, I know I've already talked about all that stuff. That's not the new news I'm talking about. But what we know is that Disney officially filed a permit with the South Florida Water Management District recently for a trailer compound, which will offer parking and utilities for those who will be working on site. That means we might start to see some construction movement in the Animal Kingdom scene soon, or at least soon-ish, but we'll make sure to keep you updated when we hear more about it. So we're gonna talk next about Feathered Friends in Flight because why wouldn't we? This is a 35 minute show that everybody skips, but it is very cool. It takes place at the Anandapura Theater in the Asia area of the park. During the performance, a couple of Animal Kingdom's professional trainers will teach guests all about the birds of the park, meaning you can expect lots of guest appearances from the feathered stars themselves. Parrots will sing, owls will low dive, numerous birds catch fruit in the air. It's a good time. And showtimes are listed on the My Disney Experience app, but typically they happen all throughout the morning and afternoon, up until 3.30 p.m. Okay, another very cool part of Animal Kingdom that a lot of people don't even know about, and I personally didn't even go to until I'd been going to Animal Kingdom for like five or six years, because I didn't know these were there. Animal Kingdom has specific animal trails that you can leisurely explore at your own pace. Now, I am not talking about the Maharaja Jungle Track and, you know, the... Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. We kind of know about both of those, right? We've all sort of been on them, but the Discovery Island trails wrap around the tree of life that everyone loves taking pictures in front of, but those very trails are some of the least frequented. People don't realize that you can actually go and walk that close to the tree of life, walk up and through those trails, because it kind of looks like there's gates there, but there aren't. So don't make the same mistake as me and skip these trails during your next visit because these will get you up close and personal with the incredible carvings on the Tree of Life. You got amazing vantage points from these trails. And honestly, I rarely see anybody on these trails. There's also a cool part where you go behind a waterfall, which is just awesome. I mean, seriously, if you're gonna propose to your future spouse, please do it behind a waterfall at Animal Kingdom on the Discovery Island trails. That's incredibly romantic. I I love it. It's okay, you don't have to give me credit for giving you that idea. I think it's amazing, but go do that because these are such beautiful trails and they're so chill and relaxing. And the best part is you can enter these trails from multiple locations. Near the Africa Bridge over by Adventurer's Outpost, that's one way to enter them, or near the It's Tough to Be a Bug entrance is another. But we like to enter through that first path near the Africa Bridge best since it's also close to the Creature Comforts coffee shop, meaning we can swing by to grab a coffee or tea before starting our Discovery Island Trails journey and just chill out and caffeinate. 
So who's ready to hear the story of Diggs County before Dinoland USA becomes a thing of the past? I know, me too. As the story goes, a married couple named Chester and Hester set up a gas station along Route 498 in Diggs County. And all was pretty quiet and sleepy up until the year 1947 when an amateur paleontologist dug up some bones and found out Diggs County was a hot spot for dinosaur fossils. Thus, the Dino Dig site was born. At first, this site was just made up of a few tents here in there, but eventually it became a fully fleshed out Dino Institute where renowned scientists came to work and study. The Institute is now populated with grad students who sell food over at Restaurantosaurus because they're hashtag broke. And eventually Chester and Hester were inspired to retheme their gas station into that kitschy roadside shop that sells dino themed knickknacks and trinkets galore and has a very, very fun T-Rex Santa in the winter. And the rest, as they say, is history. Prehistoric even. So it's easy to overlook the details of Tusker House when Mickey, Donald, Goofy, and Daisy are the stars of the show in this restaurant, but don't forget to take a look at where you are when you're dining. Once you're inside the restaurant, you'll have a chance to look around and take in the scene. The buffet is made out of different carts, fashioned from whatever the villagers could get their hands on and set up like an open air market. But the seating areas are themed as a safari company's offices and waiting areas. There are lots of decorative wall hangings and authentic looking signs that'll really drive that theming home, like the sign listing out the safari drivers on call, or another sign showing the different safari tours available, as well as their scheduled departures. I don't know about you, but I'd be down for one of those hippo watching tours. And then there's the most educational sign of them all, a whole list of different animals that you're gonna see out on safari, as well as how to pronounce their names in Swahili. I love the imagineering of basically all the restaurants in Animal Kingdom, so if you get a chance to really look around in some of these, take the time. I have a hard time keeping houseplants alive, but Animal Kingdoms managed to not only have a full park of lush and thriving greenery, but even host a character made completely of foliage. Divine is a rare character decked out in vines and other plant life, but if you're lucky, then you'll be able to spot her walking around Animal Kingdom on occasion. She can be a little intimidating at first, especially since she blends in with the surrounding scenery and literally towers over everyone in the park, besides maybe Kevin. Pretty sure Kevin still beats her. However, I promise you she's a very kind and gentle soul, and she'd never hurt a fly. Divine may not be out and about all the time, but the My Disney Experience app will let you know whenever she is. You'll just need to type in her name in the search engine, and the app will tell you A, where she'll be in the park that day, and B, what hours you can expect to see her around. But she is very camouflaged, so you're going to have to look hard, even if you know where she is. It's not just any restaurant that's named after containers. It's the Tiffin Signature Restaurant. I know, I was shocked when I first heard about that too. The name Tiffin's comes from an Indian English word meaning a light lunchtime meal, but Tiffin's can also refer to the containers that were traditionally used to carry the meal. You can buy Tiffin's now if you go on Amazon. Now, if you look on top of the restaurant's sign outside, you'll see the inspiration for the name, Genuine Tiffin Containers. Even if you don't dine at the Rainforest Cafe right outside the Animal Kingdom front gates, you may still want to take advantage of its secret park entrance. Yep, you still need to go through the main security check area, and yes, you still need a legit park ticket to get into Animal Kingdom, but if the lines are really, really long to scan in, you can go through the Rainforest Cafe's gift shop and find a secret park entrance. You're gonna find way fewer crowds to make your way on past, especially in the morning. Don't leave Animal Kingdom without your free souvenirs and ample learning experiences too. Over at Wilderness Explorers headquarters or any of the troop leader locations, you can become a Wilderness Explorer yourself and start earning badges for your collection. There are over 25 badges for kids to collect, but each has to be awarded to you after completing a Wilderness Challenge. Needless to say, this activity could lead to hours of entertainment with no waiting in lines necessary. Meanwhile, at Rafiki's Planet Watch, you can learn how to draw a popular animated character from an experienced Disney artist during the animation experience. After the sketch class is over, you'll have your very own work of art that you can take home with you to hang on the fridge after your vacation wraps up. Check the show schedules on the My Disney Experience app so you know when these free classes will be offered on the day of your visit. Nomad Lounge might just be my favorite lounge on Disney property. We know this. The drinks, good. The food, great. The views, real good. And the theming, superb. If you decide to have a bite and drink inside Nomad Lounge, make sure to look up. 
The banners hanging from the ceiling ask lots of travel questions, like what was your best animal encounter, or what was the most memorable food, or even how has travel changed you? A loaded question, for sure. But don't worry, these questions won't leave you hanging. See what I did there? Banners hanging? Yeah. Disney Imagineers who traveled to other countries during their research for the creation of Animal Kingdom answer each of those questions, and their answers are, for lack of better words, really awesome. But make sure you're not staring up at the ceiling too long now. Net cricks are a thing still, even in Disney, speaking from personal experience. Let's forget about how I can only watch Pixar's Up every 10 years because it makes me cry so violently I can't function like a normal human being. Instead, let's think about the happy parts of Up, like Russell the Wilderness Explorer and Doug the Talking Dog, both of whom you can now meet once again over at Animal Kingdom. Russell and Doug like to hang out on Discovery Island over at the Wilderness Explorer's Clubhouse, of course, but you might not always see them together, so make sure to double check the My Disney Experience app for each of their updated appearance times. And don't forget that Kevin the Bird also likes to roam around Animal Kingdom too. Look at her just towering over everyone like the queen she is. Now, Kevin's not an actual meet and greet spot, but she does tend to wander the park's pathways frequently, so be sure to keep an eye out for her. Trust me, she's impossible to miss and she's a lot of fun. Let me introduce you to a little Dino Land USA guy that we hope doesn't go away for good after the Tropical Americas re-theme. This dinosaur sculpture was created by a concrete and found object artist called Mr. Imagination, whose main inspiration for this work came from treasures and trinkets and trash of all kinds. Leading up to Animal Kingdom's opening day, cast members would hand Mr. Imagination various discarded scraps and junk they found while working so that he could add it into the dino sculpture. One of the items that was handed to Mr. Imagination was a cast member's one year of service golden Mickey pin, which you can try to find on one of his spikes when you're facing into the Dinoland USA area. It's very, very, very tiny though, so it may take a bit more searching than just your typical Where's Waldo book page. All right, it's the best part of this video. I'm not gonna lie. So many baby animals have made their grand Animal Kingdom entrance just this past year, and we love each of them with our whole hearts. Most recently, we got to meet Elijah, an adorable baby Okapi who was born in October 2023 and recently made his debut on the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. Also toward the end of 2023, Tamarin triplets were born. These are an endangered species of primate, so the fact that we've now got three more of them in Animal Kingdom to dote on is a very big deal. And last year also brought us Cora, the sweet baby elephant who you can now see hanging out over Kilimanjaro safaris with her mama, Nadira. It's the circle of life indeed. Oh, and by the way, there are two more baby elephants on the way to Animal Kingdom. We're taking Dole Whip to a whole new level, my friends. Well, not us. It, we, we didn't create this. The cast members at Animal Kingdom created it, but... So all credit goes to them. Anyway, over at Tamu Tamu Refreshments in Africa, you can order spiked Dole Whip floats just as long as you're 21 and older. Now, one of these floats has been around for a while now, a classic Dole Whip pineapple juice float spiked with Parrot Bay coconut rum. But the other Dole Whip float was introduced just last year and is made with Ace Pineapple Craft Cider. That's right, Dole Whip and beer. But if you're not looking for a spiked float, Tamu Tamu also has non-alcoholic options too. You can order the classic Dole Whip pineapple juice juice float minus the rum, or you can try the pineapple orange soda float instead. If Magic Kingdom's Main Street confectionery gets so much attention, then Animal Kingdom's confectionery Zuri's Sweets Shop deserves just as much for its over-the-top unique wildlife treats. Zuri's takes those classic Animal Kingdom goodies and gives them an animal-inspired twist, so you can find desserts here like tamarind cake pops, monkey caramel apples, giraffe marshmallow pops, caramel and marshmallow zebra spirals, and so many other exclusive goodies to satisfy your sweet tooth. But I will never ever forget how Zuri's had that short-lived poop candy in their display case for about a week when this confectionery first opened up. Nope, not kidding, you could get poop candy here years ago, which were edible versions of scientifically correct looking elephant, giraffe, cotton top tamarind, and hippo poop for you to sample. Tasty? Yes. Popular? I assume so, and I guess maybe not, because they took it off the menu within a week, so I'm very, very sad. Okay, after that, we need a margarita. It's hard to go wrong with a classic lime and tequila margarita, but when you're in Animal Kingdom, there are so many other unique margarita variations that you may wanna try if you're looking for that classic combo with that little twist. So let's name a few Animal Kingdom margs you can add to your must-try list if you're of drinking age. 
First, at Pongu Pongu in Pandora, you can try the Moara Margarita, made special with its addition of blue curacao and neon green bursting boba balls on top. And yes, if you're as old as I am, you remember when Animal Kingdom's Pandora first opened and the Moara Margarita was pink, right? Right. Not anymore. Now at the Dawa Bar near Tusker House, you can order an African margarita, which has a Vanderhum tangerine liqueur to give it an extra citrusy flavor. Then there's the Bobo Rita at Nomad Lounge, which includes grapefruit liqueur, guava puree, and a pink peppercorn garnish. Bonus, you can also get the Hightower Rocks at Nomad Lounge too, which is another margarita variation made with Casa Dragones Blanco tequila and watermelon. Remember, even if you're not of drinking age or you're just not interested in alcohol, Animal Kingdom still has a plethora of mocktails and non-alcoholic specialties for you to try too. Some of our personal favorite non-alcoholic frozen drinks here include the Night Blossom at Pangu Pangu, the Frozen Chai at the Royal Anandapur Tea Company, you can't get it anywhere else, and the Shangri-La Berry Freeze at Warung Outpost. Some ride queue lines are a pain to wait in, but other queues are a part of the entire ride package. Expedition Everest's queue is definitely the latter of the two options and has one of the most detailed queues, not just in Animal Kingdom, but in Disney World, period. Let's set the scene. Expedition Everest's queue takes place in the quiet mountain village of Shirka Zong, where natives honor and respect the legendary guardian of the mountain. Of course, that's the Yeti. Throughout the queue, you'll notice colorful and slightly tattered prayer flags waving overhead, as well as shrines and carvings honoring the infamous beast. Despite all the red flags, and no, I'm not talking about the prayer ones here, it seems the proprietors of the Himalayan Escapes Tour Company are offering excursions through the mountains, which is why you'll pass through a booking office first before you're off to Tashi's General Store and Bar. You know, pick up some supplies. One does not simply hike the Himalayas without the essentials. After the General Store, you'll weave through an old tea warehouse that features a Yeti museum run by professional Pumba Dorje, a conservation biologist who believes in the Yeti's existence, as should you. Here, you'll see artifacts reflecting Nepalese culture, a history of the Himalayas, photos of those who have hiked to the summit, and tales of the Yeti himself. And then what happens? Well, then it's time for you to board the ride. Island Mercantile is more than just a popular gift shop. You'll just have to be willing to dive into the decorative details and see beyond the merch lining the shelves. This is what we do when we go into Animal Kingdom every single day. We find all of these incredible details and we can't wait to tell you about them. Each section of this store has a specific theme. There's an elephant themed room where you'll find fun abstract images of the animal near the ceiling and painted on the posts. There's a room full of insects like bees and ants, but I'ma just skip over that cause it's tough to be a bug has fueled my bug trauma to the extreme. The beavers take the stage in the room with the registers. Notice the posts around the merch in this area look like logs chewed down, a nice beaver inspired touch, but probably our favorite room is the camel room, just for all the hidden camel details in the lamps alone. Next up is the Flasca Reclinata. Gazuntite. Yep, the Flasca Reclinata might have a funny name, and it also might be up to some funny antics, but it's seriously cool addition to the entrance of Pandora. This huge green and pink plant waiting to greet you in the world of Avatar is actually alive. If you touch the pink area on the plant, it'll respond to you by glowing, spraying water, and making noise. That's just the plant's way of saying hello. Across from Pete Safari, you can find the Otter Grotto, a little sanctuary that houses a family of Asian small clawed otters. To find the viewing area to the otter's humble abode, you'll enter into a stone-covered path leading up to their little slice of land and water fun. The otters won't always be out and about, being all cute and playful, but your best chance of seeing them active will be first thing in the morning or once the sun starts to set. Basically, if it's too hot outside for you, it's probably nap time for the otter crew. Hey look, I'm a poet. You otter be proud of me. Okay, this video is so fun so far. I love exploring my probably favorite Disney park of the whole Disney World circuit. I know, I say that about all of them. But if you're looking for more specific advice on how to plan out your Animal Kingdom park day, make sure to scan the QR code you see on the screen now or head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Animal Kingdom to download our free Animal Kingdom quick guide filled with full ride lists, recommended restaurants, show descriptions, suggested planning itineraries, and more. Okay, ready for the second half? Here we go. 
Along with all the wildlife, Animal Kingdom is also home to a couple of beers that you're not going to find outside Disney World property. Over at Satuli Canteen, or Pongu Pongu in Pandora, you can grab a green beer called the Green Hawks Grog Ale. This is the only place you'll be able to get your green beer fix outside of St. Patrick's Day, and it's probably better than any other beer that's dyed green for the sole sake of the St. Patty's aesthetic anyway. You'll also find the exclusive Kungaloosh Spiced Excursion Ale at Nomad Lounge and the neighboring Tiffin's Restaurant. Bonus, this Kungaloosh Ale is also served over at Skipper Canteen in Magic Kingdom, so I guess Animal Kingdom was A-OK -okay with sharing its exclusivity with the Jungle Cruise-themed restaurant. Now it's the Animal Kingdom Bird Shows Part 2 that you never knew you needed. Every day, macaws fly around the Tree of Life, making a pit stop for a short show in front of the park's icon, and then fly off toward Dino Land to return home to their enclosures backstage. This show is called Winged Encounters, and you can find the specific showtimes for it on the My Disney Experience app. The birds usually make their flight a few times a day, so you can find what time works best for you and watch dozens of macaws soaring inches above your head. They are beautiful birds. It's not just the inside of Tusker House that holds all the fun Africa-inspired theming. It's the outside of the restaurant, too. More specifically, the backside. On the backside of Tusker House, you can spot a wall of masks, each created to feature a bunch of cool shapes and colors and designs. I think my favorite is the little round silver one in the bottom right-hand corner. There's just something about that little dude that screams, you want to wear me on your face. Now, if you look underneath all these masks, you'll see a sign that labels them as Joe Rody Masks and Beads, which is a little nod to the Imagineer who created Animal Kingdom and made it the awesome park it is today. Okay, now you're gonna see these everywhere. Disney has those tried and true frozen novelty ice cream treats sold in kiosks and carts around all the parks, which typically includes Mickey premium bars, frozen bananas, sometimes frozen bananas are hard to find, Mickey ice cream sandwiches, and those strawberry fruit bars. But if you decide to get one of these goodies from the ACE mobile treats cart in Pandora, you'll actually have access to a one of a kind popsicle treat that you won't find anywhere else on property. The Fruits of Moara bar is made with three different flavors, strawberry, lime, and raspberry. Initially, you'll be able to taste each flavor separately, but once the Orlando sun has its way with this, the flavors are going to start melting together, and that is not a bad thing. Now, if you're on the prowl for some super unique Animal Kingdom souvenirs, Wind Traders in Pandora is the place to be. Wind Traders is filled with Pandora-inspired merchandise like shoulder banshees and banshee wings and banshee puppets and banshee hoodies. Okay, I promise it has more besides the banshee stuff, but the banshee stuff is pretty unique and people love it. If you want a truly one-of-a-kind Disney souvenir, though, you may want to invest in one of the Wind Traders' customizable experiences, like the Avatar Maker. The Avatar machine scans your face and creates an Avatar knob figurine for you based on what you look like. This is kind of a pricey souvenir, around 80 bucks per figure, so for a customizable avatar experience on the cheaper side of things, you could build your own Navi necklace or bracelet instead, and that's only about 20 bucks. The experience includes one bracelet or necklace cord, eight beads of your choosing, and also your choice of a feather or crystal pendant. I would have loved this when I was a kid. Disney World likes to keep you fully immersed in each of its specific lands, but every now and then it'll break the fourth wall to remind you that, hey, it has other really cool theme parks nearby that you can visit too. Before you enter Chester and Hester's Dinosaur Treasures gift shop through the entrance right under the big volcano billboard announcing how the stores are erupting with gifts, make sure to look up once you're under the awning. There are little signs you'll see hanging overhead and they say something different depending on the direction you're facing. If you look in the direction facing the back of Dino Land, the signs will say, rough scaly skin making you groan, don't despair, use fossil foam. Pretty catchy, right? However, if you look in the direction facing into Dino Land in the direction of Triceratops Spin, the sign says, when in Florida, be sure to visit Epcot. Wow, subtle. Hidden Mickeys are everywhere, and I mean everywhere in Disney World, but some Hidden Mickeys you're never going to actually see. Like the big Expedition Everest Hidden Mickey, for instance. You're never going to see that Hidden Mickey because the ride itself is shaped to look like one big Hidden Mickey. Track, mountains, and all, which you can only fully appreciate from a bird's eye view. But at least you can impress your friends and family with that tidbit of info. Sharing is caring even for the animals at Kilimanjaro Safaris. For most folks who ride Kilimanjaro in Disney's Animal Kingdom, seeing the African dogs in the savanna is one of the ride highlights. Well, kind of. They can be sleepy little things that don't do a whole lot, but they sure are cute. However, during your particular Kilimanjaro Safaris ride, you might not see the African dogs at all. Hyenas switch out with the African dogs in the late afternoon each day, but only if they want to. So you might spot hyenas instead if you ride Kilimanjaro Safaris 
toward the end of your day. Just remember they're laughing with you, not at you. Dinoland USA's days may be numbered, but some of the dinosaurs in Animal Kingdom won't be going anywhere, even after the Tropical Americas take over. As you travel around the line for It's Tough to Be a Bug, you'll shrink down into bug size and see the Tree of Life's many sculpted animals continue on with you throughout the queue. As you get smaller, you'll notice the animals get bigger. And when you're finally under the roots of the tree, you'll start to come face to face with dinosaurs. And this is on purpose, y'all. Animal Kingdom's icon features dinosaurs Dino creatures on the Tree of Life, but they're only carved into the deadwood roots of the tree as a symbol of their extinction. Extinct, but not forgotten. So I could go on and on and on about the awesome snacks in Disney's Animal Kingdom. In fact, I have in several other videos, as well as our DFB snack and dining guides over on DFBstore.com. So if you want to know about all the snacks in Animal Kingdom, we got you covered. But for the sake of time, I'm going to tell you about three of my favorite savory snacks in Animal Kingdom that are big enough to share, just to give you something to nosh on in this video. So snack number one, the Tiffin's bread service. You don't have to make an advanced dining reservation for the Tiffin's signature restaurant in order to enjoy Enjoy this though, you can order it at Nomad Lounge. The Tiffin's bread service comes with lots of different bread types like naan and lavash as well as unique dipping accompaniments like coconut curry sauce, guava sauce, and ginger pear chutney. Just remember Nomad Lounge has that mobile walk-up wait list that you'll need to join before you're invited into the bar area. Most likely, sometimes if you show up really early, you just can get a seat. Now, the wait list gets real popular, so the sooner you can join it, the better. Nomad Lounge typically opens around 10.30 or 11 a.m. daily. Snack number two, the chicken fried rice. Technically, the chicken fried rice at Yak and Yeti local food cafes is listed as a side option, but for $8, you're gonna get a lot of rice. So much, in fact, that you could treat it as a full meal for yourself, or you can split it with a buddy if you just need something savory to hold you over until your next snack pit stop. And snack number three, the fries with pulled pork and cheese. So the pulled pork and cheese fries at Flame Tree Barbecue has all of our favorite savory ingredients wrapped up in one basket. They're cheesy, they're meaty, they're slightly tangy from the barbecue sauce and just the right amount of salty. Now these have come and gone from the menu and we've been very sad and upset when they're gone, but they are back my friends. So if you have watched these videos for a long, 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 long time, you know these are some, these are my birthday, I call them my birthday fries because I get them on my birthday, but they are also back after like kind of a three year hiatus. So you can head over to Flame Tree Barbecue and get them on your next visit. Again, this is an easily shareable snack, but don't be surprised if a friendship or two is ruined because you just can't bring yourself to share. Harambe isn't just an area of Animal Kingdom that you walk through to get to Kilimanjaro Safaris or Festival of the Lion King. I believe this vehemently. It completely transports you into an authentic African village. But in order to really get that, you're going to have to take the time to stop and look around at all the details surrounding you, starting with the rooftops. Yep, the rooftops. Imagineers actually brought over African craftsmen to create authentically thatched roofs in Harambe. To thatch the roofs in the traditional way is done in Africa. The craft Craftsmen navigated the roofs barefoot to feel out for weak spots and make sure the thatching was secure. This barefoot approach caused some concerns for OSHA, the U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Administration, meaning Disney had to complete a lengthy process of petitions and appeals to help the craftsmen create the thatched roofs authentically. So don't take those roofs for granted, because Disney had to jump through a lot of hoops to get them done while still keeping true to the culture. Before you get to soar across the Valley of Moara on the back of your own banshee during the Flight of Passage, you'll be sent into a chamber to get matched with your own Avatar Navi. But this pre-show actually can be different depending on how efficiently the line's moving. We learned on one of our Disney tours that the faster the ride loads, the longer your pre-show is gonna be since they're not ready for you in the next chamber just yet. So if you're in the pre-show and suddenly you're being scanned for Pandorian parasites, that's why. It's a stalling tactic. Festival of the Lion King is that Broadway caliber show filled with pageantry and costumes, music, puppets, acrobatics, all based around the original story of Disney's animated classic, The Lion King, 30 years old, remember? But don't think you're just gonna sit back in that round theater and do absolutely nothing aside from appreciating the performance while you're here. You got a job to do. The theater is sectioned into four parts, the elephant section, the giraffe section, the warthog section, and the lions. Now, before Simba and the gang arrive for the show, you're gonna need to make them feel welcome, which means greeting them in your assigned animal's personal way. So when prompted, get ready to release the 
animal inside of you. Along with all the animal antics, kids may also have the opportunity toward the end of the show to join the performers and dance around the stage. Only a lucky few will be chosen to do this, so to increase your kids' chances of getting chosen, you may want to sit more towards the front of the stage. Then again, the views of the entire show tend to be better more towards the back bleacher seats, so it really depends on what you want to prioritize here. The tree of life has never looked so good, at least not in your pictures. The Capture Your Moment experience, which you can find listed via the Disney World Enchanting Extras collection online, lets you book a personalized 20-minute photo session with a Disney Photo Pass photographer. The photo sessions here are gonna take place on or near Discovery Island so that your pics can have that beautiful backdrop of the tree of life. Now, when you check in for your shoot, your photographer will discuss locations and ask you a few preference questions. And after that, you're gonna be posing for the camera like the model you are. You can also book back-to-back -back sessions if you want more time and more pictures to choose from. Each 20-minute session is $99, but you can book 60 days before your visit over on Disney's website. Yep, Animal Kingdom has premium storage lockers at the front of their park like all the other Disney parks have, but it also has a second secret set of premium lockers right outside Kali River Rapids. While many guests who choose to pay for lockers here are just trying to keep their belongings dry before boarding the family raft ride, anyone can pay for a Kali River locker and have access to it all day long without having to backtrack to the front of the park each time you need something out of it. Nope, there are no parades in Animal Kingdom anymore. Who remembers when they're used to, I used to always try to get that table at Yak and Yeti up in the top right hand corner of the restaurant because you had a great view of the Animal Kingdom parade from there. It was an awesome lunch spot. Anyway, now there are no parades, but there are flotillas and those can be just as fun to see. Well, maybe not just as fun, but they're fun. Animal Kingdom's flotillas feature Disney characters on boats that travel all up and down and around the Discovery River. You might see Mickey and Minnie, Goofy, Chip and Dale, Donald and Daisy, Launchpad and Scrooge, even Pocahontas and Miko. And while there are several good places around the park where you can wave to your aquatic bound friends in passing, there is one particular viewing spot here that's way better than the rest. Remember that secret pathway connecting Africa to Pandora that I talked about earlier? If you head to that pathway, entering through the Africa side, and stand under the bridge, you'll have one of the best views of these flotillas park wide. This area puts you at eye level with the flotillas, unlike many other spots around the park where you're gonna be able to wave at your friends from up above. Plus, the biggest secret to this spot is that the boats actually slow down a little bit here because of the narrow waterway, giving you more time to wave and snap some pictures. Animal Kingdom doesn't go over the top with their holiday shenanigans, but what they do pull off here around the end of the year is definitely worth a visit. In fact, one of my very favorite things to see start popping up around the holiday season is Animal Kingdom's Merry Menagerie. The Merry Menagerie is made up of winter animal puppets strolling along Discovery Island, and the animals come up and greet guests while nearby live musicians also help to set the scene. Even if you aren't big on celebrating the season, these little guys are an absolute delight. Throughout the holiday season, the projections on the Tree of Life go into holiday mode too, delivering beautiful winter-inspired scenes across Animal Kingdom's park icon. And keep your eye on the character flotillas, because you might just catch Santa Claus floating his way on by. No other park quite gets into Earth Day like Animal Kingdom does, and that's because Animal Kingdom's birthday and Earth Day are the same day, April 22nd. Around this time of year, Animal Kingdom likes to go all out on the Earth Day celebrations with rare character appearances, special treats, limited time merchandise, and limited time photo ops. So if you're Animal Kingdom bound during the month of April, be on the lookout for these kinds of exclusive celebratory goodies. Like the Honeycomb Moose at Creature Comforts, the Elephant Cupcake at Pizza Fari, and Restaurant Asaurus. Can you believe they're still using that elephant mold? They've been using that since I first started this vlog like 15 years ago. The Pachyderm and Pollinator Gin Cocktail at Nomad Lounge and Tiffin's Restaurant, that looks very, very cool. And even more fun animal-inspired treats and eats and drinks to discover. Found something you want to buy at the Discovery Trading Company or Island Mercantile, but the line to check out looks a little too long for you? Try Mobile Merchandise Checkout instead. Yes, we're never going to stop telling you about it because there's still too many people who don't know about it and aren't using it. The Mobile Merchandise Checkout option allows you to buy park merchandise through your My Disney Experience app instead of having to wait in a physical standby line to purchase it. 
You can find the merch checkout option on your app either by tapping on the plus sign at the middle bottom of the screen or by tapping on those three little lines, the hamburger button on the bottom right portion of the screen, which will lead you to a main menu of options. Either way, once you select the mobile merch option, you'll select the store you're currently in and then start scanning the stuff you want. Just remember that before you leave the store, you'll need to show the cast member toward the exit your QR code receipt, which you'll receive after you make your purchase. If you want to experience a truly unique side of Animal Kingdom that most people never get the chance to see, then you may want to add a private Animal Kingdom tour to your park day. Currently, there are four different VIP tours in Animal Kingdom. And don't worry, these are not like the big multi-thousands of dollars VIP tours. These are very affordable for what you get. Caring for Giants is an hour-long experience that gives you a closer look, and I mean a much closer look, at the African elephants on site. Up close with rhinos is basically the same thing as Caring for Giants, just replace elephants with white rhinos. Savor the Savanna is an exclusive guided safari tour of Animal Kingdom's Harambe Wildlife Reserve, followed by African-inspired small plates and beer and wine from a lovely private viewing area on the savanna. And the Wild Africa Trek is a three-hour tour of the Safi River Valley, an area of Animal Kingdom that typically goes on Seen by guests. This tour also includes tastes of Africa and an array of small plates from a beautiful vantage point on the savanna after your trek. Sometimes they serve them in tiffins. You know what those are now. The tour or safari you choose will determine your price point, but keep in mind that these additional experiences will cost extra, but not as much as a big ol' big ol' VIP tour. I've talked about quite a few Animal Kingdom secrets today that you're only gonna notice if you look up. And here's another one for you to add to your collection. Over at Pongu Pongu in Pandora, you're gonna notice a bunch of dog tags hanging from up above. Many of these have pictures of Imagineers printed on them, including, you guessed it, the Animal Kingdom creator and earring connoisseur, Mr. Joe Rohde. So Pandora water snails isn't the technical term for these little aquatic creatures, but that's the best way I can describe them. Over in Pandora, there's a little valley pond where some blue slug-like creatures with spiky shells on their backs lounge around during the day. And these guys are actually called Sagittaria. Isn't that a star sign? No, wait, that's Sagittarius. Ignore me. At first, the Sagittaria might seem idle, but watch out because they're way more active than they initially lead you to believe. Turns out these pond dwellers are hunting down prey, which they take down by spraying powerful jets of water into the air. So if you're within their shooting range, be careful because you might just step into a Sagittarius stream. Now this awesome thing makes me kind of melancholy. Back when Pandora first opened, do you remember the Swatuwaya performing the Navi drum ceremony? Unfortunately, this offering hasn't been back since the 2020 closures. This is one of those streetmosphere live entertainment things that is not back yet. But if you're over by those drums, you can still put on a little performance yourself by beating on those ceremony drums. If you're still on the lookout for some professional percussion during your Animal Kingdom visit, check out the musical stylings of the Tamu Tamu drummers over in Harambe during select times throughout the day. All right, seriously, how much more can I emphasize how incredibly detailed each of the Animal Kingdom restaurants are? Even their quick service puffy pizza joint is worth heading into just for the dining room art. Also, they have a brand new chicken parmesan sandwich that's not too bad. Now, the four different pizza safari dining rooms are covered in colorful and quirky animal murals, each themed around a different animal characteristic. One room is all about the animals and their art of camouflage. Another features animals that carry their homes on their backs. Then there's a room for all of our upside down animal friends. And the final room showcases a bunch of different animals that like to party at night. So many secrets lurk inside Pandora alone, but we're gonna wrap up the Pandorian Easter eggs today with one last final and extremely cool detail that you're not gonna wanna miss, but you might have to. After you're done taking the ride of your life on the back of a banshee, you might find some rather human looking handprints on your way out of Flight of Passage. Not everybody gets to see this, only people that exit through this particular exit hallway. So who are these people who put their hands and initials on one of the most popular rides in Disney World? The creators, of course. These prints belong to James Cameron, Avatar's director, Joe Rohde, Pandora's lead designer, and John Landau, Avatar's executive producer. All right, so do you love Animal Kingdom as much as I do now? After hearing about those awesome things, I hope so. If you don't, that's okay. You don't have to tell me the truth. I think Animal Kingdom is amazing and I think you should too. 
Anyway, AK doesn't get enough credit for how many details and activities and hidden gems are sprinkled throughout, but hopefully today's video helped you to appreciate a little bit more of this younger sibling park even more than before. Now don't forget, if you're planning a trip out to Animal Kingdom soon, or you're even just thinking about heading in that direction, go ahead and download our free Animal Kingdom quick guide at disneyfoodblog.com slash Animal Kingdom. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.